What's up everybody and welcome to the 16th Java tutorial. In the last two tutorials, we talked about creating a new class that's accessible from our main class and then also we instantiated some objects and basically their accounts because since we're making a, like a bank program that where you have the name of an account, the account number and the balance. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be going over some methods because when you have a class and you have it perform certain actions like this one, how we're creating bank accounts, um, the methods are going to be controlling the actions, what this class needs to do. So in the last video, I showed you this method right here, and it's get balance, and it returns the balance of that account, whatever object you use to call it. So let me just run you through this real quick. We have the instance variables that are going to be specific for that object. Remember, they're encapsula encapsulated within this class. They're private. And then we have our constructor. And the constructor automatically is called whenever the class is called. And then it takes whatever arguments that you have in it and creates that object, creates that data. And then also, we gonna or we're gonna need some methods with this so we have one method already I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this right now and then I'll bring it back uh, when I'm finished with the methods okay so for this class and with what we're doing the methods that I think we need are gonna be we need to be able to deposit money into a bank account we need and we need to be able to withdraw money from a bank account and then we need to get the balance, return the balance. So let's go ahead and start with these methods. Now the methods are going to be after the constructor and the variables. And the way that you do methods, the way that uh, you write them out, the first part of it is going to be it's going to be the privacy. So this is going to be public most methods are public because all they are are actions. They're not actually holding any important data that can be pulled from them. They're just doing things. That's what the methods are for. The next part is going to be the return of the method. These are not going to be actually returning anything because they're just going to be handling the money to deposit or withdraw, but they're not actually going to need to return anything. That'll make sense in a minute. And then after that is your name for the method. And this is going to be our deposit. So we have the privacy, the return type, and then the name of the method. And then within our parameters is going to be what you're putting in, um, like what your arguments are, what you're putting into this method. So since we have a deposit, a method that deposits, we're going to need to have something that, like a, a double. So it's gonna be a double type because it's gonna be some amount of money that we're gonna deposit. And then you can name it whatever you want and I'm just gonna name it amount just to be simple. And that way it just keeps it simple. When I'm in here creating the method, I know which variable to use. And then it's always good to comp comment out your code so I'm just going to put a comment out here just to let me know what this method is doing. It's a method to deposit a specified amount into an account. So now that we're within the method, we have to write the code for what the method is going to do. And since we're going to deposit, that means we're adding money to the account. So we're going to change the balance, right? So balance equals balance plus amount. So if I deposit $100 into this, my balance is going to equal the balance plus the $100. It's pretty simple for that. And that's the entire method for that. That's all that's all you need for to deposit. Now we need to also withdraw. So, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a public. It's not going to return anything, so it's going to be void and then we name it and we'll just call this withdraw. Now within the 
parameters, we need to put in our arguments. Now, when you withdraw money from an ATM, which is what we're going for here, you're gonna need to tell them what amount. And then a lot of times, if it's not your bank ATM, like they're gonna require a fee. So we're gonna put in two arguments here. So the first one is gonna be a double, and it's gonna be the amount. And our second double is gonna be fee. These are gonna be what arguments we put into the method. Now, I know that these are both amount, but the thing is, when they're in the parameters for the method, it only deals with what's written in here. This amount has nothing to do with this method with this method at all. It only has to do with what's within the withdraw method. And this only has to deal with this. They don't talk to each other at all. So now that we have the withdraw method, we need to do the same thing that we did. What, do we, what we're gonna have it do, what action? So when you withdraw money, you're gonna pull money out. So we're gonna change the balance. So balance equals, and we're gonna have the balance again. And then we're gonna minus the amount, and then also minus the fee. Since like a fee can be anywhere ranging a few dollars to who knows how much an ATM charges, and then whatever amount that you also pull out, and then that'll set your new balance. So that's it for this withdraw method. It's pretty simple. And then I'm gonna write a comment again. I'm just gonna paste it here. It's always good to comment it out that way you know what each method does. Sometimes it's not as simple as this. So a method to withdraw a specified amount from account, it just makes it very easy for somebody to look at your code or you to look at your code at a later date. Okay, now these methods perform they do a specific task now but they don't return anything so if I call one of these methods and have it deposit $500 into my account or you know the account one or account two um, the, the balance will change in those accounts or in that account but that's it it's not gonna return anything and you're not gonna see any change unless you have a way to see the balance so now we need a method that we can retrieve or return the balance. And this is called a getter. And I'll explain that in a second. So the same thing, it's gonna be public because it's accessible with, from any class. Um, and normally we have void here and it's because they're not returning anything, but this time we do want it to return, we do. So we're gonna have it public double. And then we're going to name it get balance. And it's going to do exactly what we named it. It's going to get the balance. It's going to get that amount. So this double is what it's going to return. If it was if this um if this getter was going to return a string, this would be string. If it was going to be an integer, this would be an integer. But since the balance is a double, we're gonna have it return a double. Okay, so um, for a getter, it's usually as simple as this. You're gonna have it return, and then whatever you're gonna have, whatever variable you're gonna have it return. Let me copy that comment here just to, there we go, clear it up. So this is a getter met a method to return balance. And that's, that's all this does. When you run this method, get balance, you literally get balance. That's what it does, it returns that variable. So that's simple, we have three methods here. We have two that changed our balance, one deposits, one withdraws, and then we have a getter here, which returns a double. Now to show you how these work, let's go to our main class here. And let's do some deposits and withdraws. So the first thing we'll do, we have this, we have these two accounts that have been made, account one and account two, and they're objects. 
We have Jack Smith account, Jill Jones, and then these uh, the account number that's tied to it, and then we have the balance that was initially put in when we made the accounts. So in order to call a method with an object, what you're gonna wanna do is type out your object name. This is our object, so we're using the object name. We're gonna use the dot operator. So you press period or dot, and then it's gonna give you a list of methods. This is, this is how you call methods using an object. It's just this, the dot operator and then whatever you put after it, you type out a method. So when you press dot, it gives you a long list of what you can do, what methods you can do. So we want to deposit. Now you can double click that and it, it'll pull it for you and then it'll, it'll even give you the amount. It's because it goes to the deposit and then it looks at what it, what it needs. So it'll give you the amount or you can press period and then spell it out yourself if you know the name of it, deposit. So here it's gonna take a double, that's amount, now, now, since it knows what it's taking, it's taking a double amount because it, it knows it right here. You don't have to put what data type it is. You just type out the number. So this would be like, say you wanted to deposit $5,000 into that account. You don't need to type out double here. You don't need to do that because it knows that it, it is getting a double. So what this did was an object and then we called the deposit method and then we put in 5,000 for it. Now if we run it, it's not gonna say anything. It's just going to deposit that money. So it did deposit that money, but when I run it, it's not gonna display anything or show any changes, even though it did work and it did happen. But to show you that it did happen, this is where we can use our balance, our get balance, which is our getter method. So to, to display that to the screen, we use our system.out.println, and then you use your object, and then we're going to call that get balance method. Just get balance. And then you don't need to pass in anything because if you look here, it doesn't take anything in its arguments. All this method does is return the balance. So when this is called with this object, it's just going to return a value and then whatever value this is is going to be displayed to the screen since we have it within the parameters of the the print line so i hope that makes sense so we deposited 5000 and then we're going to call the get balance it's going to return a double some sort of amount which is going to be the balance and then since we're going to display it to the screen so let's run it now we did have 2,500, we deposited 5,000, and then there you go. We have 7,500 in it now. So that worked, and let's do this again. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that to be quicker. So let's put in a little less this time. We're gonna deposit 500 into it. So now it should be, what? 8,000 since we had 5,000, 2,500, which is 750 or um, 7,500, and then we're going to deposit 500 more and then display. So now we have 8,000 in there. So those both work perfect. Now let's go ahead and use our withdraw method. So this is going to take two arguments. The amount, which is a double, and the fee, which is a double. So the same thing, in order to call that, you type out your object, count one, and then you can either look for it, and you'll see it's, it's right here, withdraw, and then see it has double amount and double fee, and then the void, which is the return type, doesn't return anything, and then it's pretty simple. You're just going to fill in the amount and the fee. So how much do we want to withdraw? Well, a couple awesome video games came out. So I am going to withdraw $200 and go shopping. Now this ATM has a $3 fee, so that sucks, but it's worth it. So if we run it, same thing, 
it's going to show the balances from before. So we deposited 5,000, we have 7,500, and then we deposited 500 and um, called our get balance and then had 8,000. And then we withdrew $200 and there was a $3 fee, but there's no display yet. So we'll just copy that system.out.println and we're going to call our get balance method. Now we'll run it and you'll see that we have $203 missing. It'd be 7,800 with the $200 withdraw and then with the $3 fee that brings down to $7,797. So that's how you use methods and that's how you um, use the return type because you'll see that it returned a double and then all we did was just display that that value that it returned. So I hope that helped kind of clear up methods and how to use them. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to go over one more method and it's the two string method It's super important and it's already a default method in Java. So make sure you watch that one to finally understand um, the methods within other classes and how to use them. So I really appreciate you watching this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.